It's another episode of Explicit Content. I'm here with my boy Evan. Evan Overall, a real Renaissance man, a man of many hats. Yes, really don't even know where to start, but we're gonna have a real kind of casual conversation today. Um, touch a few diff- different things, touch base. How you feeling today, though? Man, honestly, happy to be alive. Number one, um, humble. Yeah, how I feel. What you got going on? Um, you been working on anything in quarantine? Man, how quarantine been treating you? Really, all I've been doing is just locked in on clothes. Day in and day out, I wake up and go to sleep with all of this on my mind. And honestly, with it happening so suddenly and everything shutting down the way it did, it was just like, all right, let me focus on what I have here and make something big while I have the time to. So when you say what you had here, you already had like a clothing brand, right? Mm Mm-hmm. What's your brand called? It's called 2-7. Okay. How long you had that going on? Uh, it's been launched for about two years now. We've been working on it. Yeah. Okay. So what? how would you describe your brand? Like if um, somebody didn't know. Overall, I would say it's more of a initiative, if anything. Um, I kind of use it as a platform to like push the importance of originality and in that way like people gravitate towards it as if it's a club you know what i'm saying and that's where the logo comes in handy because it feels like a very like family oriented thing like even when all of this started happening um i didn't just focus on pushing product, I was focusing on how I could get people involved while they were at home. So then I launched the Live Fridays thing where I pulled in different DJs from around the city and we did podcasts live from a boutique in downtown Nashville called Rooted. And we did that for uh, a few Fridays and it was cool, but I really just wanted people to feel like they were doing something while they were at home, like have something to look forward to because a lot of events got canceled because of this and a lot of things got put on hold because of this. So I don't know. I was just trying to make the best out of a kind of shitty situation. So um, I guess with your brand, I don't want to call it mom and pop, but how how's like your, your team range and just you or you feel me? You got like a team of like, you work in a warehouse or hat, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, it's just me and Ron, honestly. It's just me and Ron. And, and you do pretty much everything on this machine? Mm hmm. I take it everywhere with me. Like, I'm always on the go with it. And, I mean, it's getting me by for right now, but, yeah. Definitely so, want to be in a place where I'm able to manufacture everything efficiently. So how long you been, so if you had your brand for two years, how long have you been in clothes or interested in clothes or having your own brand? What were you doing before this, I should ask? A lot of shit, bro. But it was like, clothes were always there. Like even, cause honestly, the clothing side of things took over when I was like in eighth grade. So in eighth grade, we had this business class and we had to launch a company, but everybody was already like selling chips and shit like that. So I couldn't do that. And then I was like, fuck it, I'm going to start selling t-shirts. So I had a little brand that was kind of like rips of Last Kings and like Tisa and that type of era. And it was called Exclusive Life. So it was just XL. I took the E off. And um, I was selling like little pocket tees around school. And it wasn't dudes that was buying my shit. It was like mostly girls. And then when the dudes would see the girls that they liked wearing my shit, they would come and buy it. And it like kind of worked out, so, so that you, was when I I knew I could make money off something. And you said I was eighth grade, mm-hmm. so how were you like twelve, thirteen? Or? Yeah, something like that. And I, okay, so I know you know we went to Banneker together, but what was you going? What was the eighth grade? You were in Denver. Yeah, I was in Colorado at that point. You want to talk a little bit about that, or? Man, Colorado is crazy. Honestly, that's what grew me up very, very yeah, how, fast. How, what's the influence of Colorado in your life like now, living in Nashville? Honestly, Colorado, like, 
we were traveling before then, but Colorado like gave me my confidence in going so, like going to somewhere completely new, not knowing anybody and being able to make something out of nothing. And everywhere I go now, it's the same thing. Even when I got to Nashville, I had nothing, knew nobody. And it was like, since I've been there, I've created so many different avenues with the helps of my peers. And I just met them on some random shit. So it was like, I'm just walking in places, meeting people through casual conversation. And it's like a true organic relationship. I didn't get placed in front of anybody. So you just kind of everything happened for a reason type shit. Mm-hmm. So a lot of your, I would say childhood life was in between Colorado um, and then Gary, of course. Colorado, Gary, Chicago, like. And then, you, okay. So then, and then a lot of your adulthood life has been in Nashville, right? You've been there like the last what, two, three years? Yeah, I was in Chicago for probably like one and a half. And then that's why I moved to Nashville. So, all right, so what, you came to Nashville probably what, early 2018, 2017. Mm-hmm. You, um, Something like that. You mentioned the store Rudis you worked in. You worked in a few stores in Nashville. Um, what was your favorite? Uh, Rooted, I just helped out at, but my, like, the store that I, like, actually, like, worked in, that was Music City Vintage. And honestly, that was the same type of relationship. Like, I just walked in there off the strength of, like, trying to find someplace that had like shops like the city like you know you yeah. walk in Vaughn Yard and shit like right. that so I just wanted to find something like I'm like come on now. I was like it's big enough it has a, enough people that are into the type of things that I'm into so I know I'm not the only one and I know there has to be something so I'm like on the hunt for it and I find this little hole in the wall shop in the alley and then boom that's Music City so at first I only saw Trey in there Trey is the bigger guy he's one of the owners and I used to just sit in there and kick it with him all day because I ain't had shit to do. Like, I ain't know nobody. I ain't have a job at the time. So it was like, shit, I'm just buying time country. every time. Exactly. So every single day, I'm just damn near either in there or I'm at Rooted with Ray. And from there, it was like they put me in a, in position to do certain things. Like, I remember I was sitting in Music City Vintage and Trey, like, he picked up something off the rack and he was like, he threw it at me. It was like, here, put this shit on. And then I was I was modeling for them at that point. And then shit, even with Ray, it was like, all right, so what do you want to do? And then I sat down and told him a lot of the things that I wanted to do. And we just figured out ways to make it happen. So. So then you mean it's in Nashville in general? Mm-hmm. What else have you been working on, like creative-wise out there? Man, right now I'm trying to get um, that Live Fridays thing like really happening after the, like all of this is over. I mean, Lord willing, but that's probably my main focus, like being more um, involved in the community rather than just in the background and pushing out clothes. Like I really want to be out there. And it's kind of a new thing for me because I've always been a sort of background backseat type of person i understand so with your clothes and stuff do you think maybe uh going more wholesale with your clothes or making like t-shirts instead of like one-on-one pieces more commission you can go so more so with that route or? i kind of like the one-on-one route just because it's more intimate like i like people having something that they know somebody else doesn't have so i want to find a way to keep that sort of incorporated in the brand like let's say i have my website there's a link you can customize your own pairs of right. pants like you pick like pick your type of thread pick your type of pattern like stuff like that and we can make that happen like figure out a way to do that but as far as just pushing out a bunch of things in bulk i don't i don't think i could ever see myself doing that i want the people who really wanted to have it so when you make these pieces where you get your inspiration from Honestly, I say shit growing up and skateboarding and being into like videography and photography, like that's what really sparks a lot of my ideas. I could just be sitting outside and look at something random and then have an idea for something. So it's like it gave me it opened up uh honestly a, a more mature world of imagination when I'm thinking about a garment. Um, 
and I, I try to be mindful of like placement of things and the longevity of things because I want somebody to be able to throw it on at any given point. Like I never like to make anything too wild because you may not be feeling that all the time. So when you make these pieces or you feel like growing up, who are some of your favorite designers or influencers? Who, you feel me, who influenced you? Honestly, probably Sean Stussy. Um, as I got older, I dove more into like Fred Perry and Ralph Lauren type shit. Yeah, Ralph Lauren for sure. Ralph Lauren was a big influence, heavy influence. Um, I say Ralph Lauren out of everybody because it gave me that confidence to wear something that was kind of different because. It wasn't, quote unquote, urbanized, I guess, whatever that word means. Yeah. And I don't know, like seeing men in cowboy boots, like that wasn't just, that wasn't something that we saw growing up. That wasn't something that anybody that else country. did. So it was like, for me to do something like that, it gave me the confidence to do that. And even on like a smaller scale, like with the Birkenstocks you have on, you still have to have a certain level of confidence to walk right. around or something like that. I so, I don't know. Um, so, you still going? Yeah, shit, Pharrell, of course. Oh yeah, what's um, up, what's up Pharrell? Nigo, to this day, uh, shit. Yeah. That's all I can think of right now. So when you got your um your two seven logo, mm -hmm. it's like the spade basically, right? Club. I mean your club, yeah. yeah. The club. Um. So you you said you you basically picked that because it's a club lifestyle. Yeah. Does it um the logo like mean anything symbolic? Like I see you got the circle around it and it's three. You know what I'm saying? Three things that mean anything to you. Or why did you pick that specifically? Other than it being a club. Um. I figured the ring around it, like every every logo that I kind of, hmm, let me not say that. I just wanted something that l looked like a stamp. Like I wanted something that when you when you see it, it looked like it was put there and it was put there for a reason. I don't know if I accomplished that, but in my mind I did. So when you see that club, that's like that's like a seal. Of, of approval like in my in my brain so yeah that's that's probably why I did that but it took me it took me a while to fi even figure out a logo that I wanted to even do for my brand I didn't know what I wanted to do at all and then it came to me the club yeah because Something simple as that. you know what I'm saying so when that came through, I mean, what, what I was and I wanted something simple. Yeah, no, nah, I'm already knowing simplicity is the way. So, mm -hmm. but what came to my mind was just, of course, like a little Trinity type vibe. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, for sure. It. So that's why. I for asked. sure. Um, for sure. What are some of your favorite brands that you like to wear than your own? Uh man, if you catch me outside of something that's not my own, I'm always in some type of Supreme. Um, why do you like group? Supreme so much? Because just just the rebel lifestyle that that's always gone with it. It was always like a fuck you sort of attitude, and they always challenged the bullshit that were was being fed to not only kids but like in society. Period. So it was just like to come out and be so just just edgy, I guess, without being. Cause a lot of people think just putting a cuss word on a shirt is edgy and that shit is not edgy bro like it, it's really not so it's like if you're able to say something and be clever it causes people to look back at your shirt and realize that it's fucked up but it's true that's why i fuck with it um you can catch me in some nego era bait um you, know, uh, you a little bit specific about nego era 
Man, bro, everything was just done right. This was before probably the cease and desist and shit with the with the with the Air Force One look alike. It took forever for that to happen, so I don't even know what's up with that. But um Yeah, now I just feel like they just push out a bunch of shit and it's not thought about anymore. Like Nigo his mind is just so particular and he's gonna make sure that every single bit of detail is put into each garment and and it it passes like everything checks out basically. So when did when did Nico stop uh dealing with Bape? I have no clue, honestly. I know Nico's he sold it over to like a big time investor or whatever. But. It was late two thousands for sure. For sure. Or like a tad bit into the 2010s, but it wasn't nothing. It, it couldn't have been past 2013. But um, shit, probably Prada, uh, Rick Owens for sure. Still rocking some Fred Perry, maybe some Rav, depending on what it is. Mm. Rock a lot of shit. You can catch me in a Walmart fit, really though. Shit, Bass Pro, that's where I really shop at. Anything else, I really just get it off grill or eBay, but like on an average day, I'm shopping at Bass Pro. Carhartt section, give me a nice little vest or something. Cool t shirt. Shit, some nice sweats. Yeah, Air Force One? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Top it off with the Air Force Ones. Go what do, what do Air Force Ones mean to you? The know, world. I know you always wear them. Air Force Ones mean everything to me. Air Force Ones mean everything to me. And the reason why they mean everything to me is because they gave me something to wear that didn't have to be an original colorway. Like, with Jordans, like, they had to be an original colorway. Like, if it was a mic, he was going to wear it. And it had to be either something that he had worn or something that was just, just important. Or, had, like, it had to be original at any given point so we was copying the same shoes over and over again i remember everybody consecutively every year that they came out we would all get the same still doing it to this day still doing it to this day he said he might put the same shoes on i'm still gonna cop oh god i'm still gonna cop so i mean it's like that but shit with forces like you got to you can you got it was a whole different world because you had so many different textures you had so many different colorways you had so many different feels like so many different leathers so, like, so how you feel about the different colorways i know you probably like the old ones of course but you still like you know how they doing like new shit with the i don't like the shit that they doing now because they, they so motherfucking stiff like i like the ones that they bring out that are like i like the ones that they retro like the ones with the with the premium materials and shit like that. Like I like the ones that like even when they did like the Coco Snakes and shit like that. Like they brought those back and it was like the original silhouette and stuff like that. I like that. But the shit that they do now with the it just it's it it looks too bulky. It's like cardboard. And it don't even come with the little like premium tab no more with the like with the with the keychain and shit. Like yeah, they, right. Man, you know, that shit right. used to be an experience, bro. Oh, yeah. What's Pull your the shoe out of here that jingle. What's your favorite Jordan one? Or Jordan? Not oh, my fault. That's my favorite. I'm not going to say my favorite, but yeah. What's your favorite Jordan um, style and then color? <sighs> my favorite Jordan. Color. What about you, Femi? Number and then. Mm-hmm. Bro, I love so many Jordans. This is so hard. Can I pick a few? Yeah, just go ahead. Like, name something. Alright, 07 Aqua 8s. A beautiful shoe. Beautiful shoe. Gotta be 07. Gotta be 07. Because, well, I mean, I'm not even gonna ask why, but tell them why. Man, bro, because if they not 07, if you don't got that, if you don't got that dark gray, that, that super dark charcoal gray, because them, like, I don't know when what them other ones came like, out, like them 2016s or some shit 14, like that. 16. Them shits was ass, bro. Was like, two different like, colors. With that glittery shit, like, no, just give me the same. Aquamarine tone with the purple, and then give me the you know what I'm saying the the gray suede. I need that. So, and then shit. Um, I love Toro fives. Shit, I love three M fives. People sleep on the three M fives. 
shit, shot pink fives. It's a lot, bro. It's a lot of shit. Right, okay. It's a lot of shit. I could go all day, bro. So, okay, before we get out of here, I'm gonna ask you these questions. I ask everybody, come on here. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna start you off. Uh, J Cole or Kendrick? Kendrick for sure. Dave Issa G Herbo. Her. Flats or drums? Wings. Flats got to. Okay. Floyd or Tyson? Um, oh man, Tyson, what the fuck? I don't even know how I thought about that. Sox or Cubs? Come on, bro. Sox. Mets or Yankees? Yankees for sure. Wigs or Soyans? Hmm. Wigs. Soyans be doing too much, fam. All right. Uh, Adidas and Nike. Nike for sure. Light skin or dark skin? We ain't with none of that colorism. We I love all black women. Damn. All, right. all black women. All right. Every every time somebody give me a different yes, answer on that shit. Yes, sir. Power I Empire. Oh, I love you. Oh, you said what? Power Empire. Man, power. All right. Louis or Gucci? Louis for sure. The baby or little baby? <laughs> little baby for sure. Uh, damn, why do you know how I want to go in this order? Let's go. Jay, uh, 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 you know, yeah. Jay, yeah? Yeah. Jay, yeah. Oh, fuck. I'm going to be a nigga and go with yeah, bro. Type shit. You know what I'm saying? I go with yeah every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Jackson or Prince? Prince, for sure. Damn, that shit kind of broke my heart. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. Broke my I'm heart. sorry, bro. Last one, Biggie or Pop? I gotta go with Biggie. I'm not gonna lie because the only sure. bro, I got a uh, real yeah. strong opinion on Pop, and y'all don't want to hear that shit because y'all gonna crucify me. So we gonna get out of here. All right, man. Go uh, tell them if they want some clothes. How they can get it? Or, you feel me? Get, man, and shit. we are getting the website back up and running. It is twsbn.in. You know what I'm saying? Um, you can follow the Instagram twsbn.in. You can follow me or my partner. I'm Evan Overall on Instagram. He is Ron Dot Backwoods on Instagram. So yes, we are the Twenty Seven Club. I'm here with my brother, C Rob. You know That's it, man. That's explicit contest. Another episode. It's been real, y'all. Yeah.